Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sarah Gottfried. Welcome back to the Health Bridge. I'm here with Dr. Pedram Shojai. Hello, Pedram. Hello, Sarah. Hello, everybody. Nice to hey, be here. I am so excited because we have one of my favorite girlfriends on the show today, Cynthia Pasquella. Cynthia, how are you? I'm so much better now that I'm with the two of you. I can't even stand it. <laughs> Can I just say that? Can we just like put that out there? I uh, love you. We just, uh, the three of us spent some time together uh, at a conference in the desert. Um, and I famously played hooky a fair amount and like hung at the pool and worked on my tan. Although I'm the brown guy and I, I, get, the, I get the least work needed. <laughs> and uh, we just, yeah, we got some quality time just hanging out and uh, being people. Because even in the health and wellness industry, the health and wellness people are all hustling, trying to keep up with all the work we've got. And sometimes people forget about the health side of the equation. So it was really nice to just rejuvenate and, and kind of drink from the fountain and, and, and kind of spend some quality time together, guys. Yeah, yeah, it certainly was. And, you know, Cynthia Pasquella, for those of you who don't know her, is the transformational nutritionist. She's the founder of the Institute of Transformational Nutrition. She just helps women get back into their bodies in a powerful way so that they can love life the way that they intended. So we, I, I'm going to actually keep your bio short, even though you've accomplished so much. The Pink Method, the Hungry Hottie Cookbook, which is my daughter's favorite cookbook and mine. But Cynthia, you know, you just finished this summit. And I, I feel like I want to start first with some of the things you learned from the Transformational Summit that you just put on. Can you maybe give us some highlights and some of your favorite takeaways? Yeah, I can. And there were so many, first of all, and thank both of you for being a part of it. You were both amazing. It was crazy at the, the great information that you shared. But, you know, I mean, I put together, you, you mentioned the Institute of Transformational Nutrition, which I started um, because I felt like, you know, if more people had this information and had the certification in nutrition and science and psychology and, you know, the things that make us do what we do, like, why do we know what to do and still don't do the right thing, that we could really become this army for change. And it's been going extremely well. We have students all across the globe. But I realized that there are other people out there who need this information who maybe don't want to help, you know, don't want to start a business or don't want to be certified. And so I thought, how can we get them that information? And there's so much misinformation out there. You guys know this. You talk about it all the time. And I believe that this misinformation is killing us. I do. I see it all the time. I see it in clients. I see it in family members. I see it in friends. And so what I wanted to do was just pull together 24 of the world's leading experts on health and nutrition and transformation and spirituality and psychology and just really overcome some of these big, essentially lies that are out, you know, we're being told in the media. And so that's what we did. And it's, you guys, it's been so cool. We've got emails from all over the world with people saying this is radically shifting how I think about my health and it's shifting just like how I live every day. And it doesn't have to be drastic. That was the other thing we really focused on in the summit. And, you know, you guys were both there and if you both of you and I said, like, give me like the things that we must do. Like, I we can't have this be complicated. We can't have like this huge list checklist of things that we have to do every day from 24 different doctors and speakers. Like just what are the biggest things that you guys have done that have made the biggest impact? And so that was really cool because we heard from people like Kevin Gianni, you know, the health renegade who's been fighting the good fight for many years now. And he shared his story of how he lost over 30 pounds by changing one thing every day. There's just one thing, like one thing is all he did. He, um, and that one thing was replacing his breakfast with a green smoothie. Nothing crazy. He changed nothing else, like no other lifestyle things, no other diet things, just the one green smoothie. And he lost over 30 pounds in a few months. So things like that made a huge impact on me and were huge takeaways for people listening in as well. I love that you brought in Kevin because he's my neighbor here in Berkeley. And I just want to say to everybody, Kevin walks the talk, man. I mean, he is still super lean, super slim, and just the nicest guy in the world. And those yeah. green smoothies not only helped him lose weight, I mean, it just it just has made him one of those guys who's just full of gratitude and just such a lovely person. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. And I love, you know, people who are just great examples of, of what they preach. And you guys are both great examples. We talk about this all the time. But um, but yeah, it was it was really cool just to sort of go into your homes and your offices and your lives and just get to know like how you seem to sort of have it all pulled together. How do you stay healthy? Because, you know, Pedram, you mentioned like we're all busy. It's like we, there's books and summits and all this crazy stuff going on. And how do we keep ourselves healthy? Like how do we fit it all? in and so it's really cool to go sort of behind the scenes with you guys to figure out how you do that um it's really interesting yeah it was a lot of fun too you know i gotta say um our uh facebook page blew up with people kind of hitting <laughs> us up saying hey you know what that was such a great summit thanks for sharing that with us so that's really nice mm, to hear because i think there's a lot of like summit overload in our universe and you know what there's uh, a shortage still of awesome information and you know the the signal to noise ratio in our world um, is always distorted because there's just a lot of monkeys jumping up and down and mm -hmm. so you know getting people to tell it like it is and really piercing through that nonsense and and really allowing people to hear what they need to hear to help themselves uh, is, is hard to do and you nailed it so right on sister thanks p man i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> A lot of fun. It was, I learned so much. Like I, I've changed things in, in my lifestyle just because of it. So yeah, thank you guys. Right. Oh, thank she's you. about to she's about to nail you with that. Okay, tell us what, what? you did. <laughs> yeah, so you just dropped a truth bomb there. I want to know what you changed as a result of the summit. So give us some good stuff. I know you were drinking those green smoothies before, so that's not <laughs> one of them. It's it's not one of them, but you you guys know how sometimes it's really easy to get away from the things that you know you should be doing, and it's like this slippery slope. It starts really small at first. You're like, oh, I don't have time to throw that maca into my smoothie this morning because I'm sure everyone does this. Um, and maybe I'll just have this stuff. And but then it's like, oh, I don't really have time for that workout today, but I'll do it tomorrow, you know. And and then tomorrow something else comes up, and so it's just this really slippery slope, as I said, and this bad habit that you get into. So I've really started looking at maximizing things. Like for me, I, I become very overwhelmed very easily, right? It's just, I'm very sensitive. I have a very sensitive nature and I'm so susceptible to energies and I'm just like, oh, let's make it stop. So what I've done is just condensed a lot of things. So like my green smoothie now, I put a lot more stuff in there. You know, um, one of the speakers talked about um, uh, curcumin for inflammation. I've been having these crazy back problems lately. So I've been throwing that in my smoothie in the morning helps like crazy. Sarah, I talked to you. I was like, I have this hormone thing happening, Sarah, like help me out here. And so through some of the information that you shared, I've been implementing things like maca. I've been, my meditation practice, totally back on track. It was so easy to fall off of you guys because at night I was like, I'm so tired, but now that's back on track and I feel so much better. And just those little routines, those little things that you can really maximize every day. That's such a good point. We have, you know, Pedram basically leading us through a gong so that, Love that. We, we don't get into the slippery slope. Like yesterday, I was like, I don't want to do the kettlebell. And no. there I was like doing my 50 kettlebell swings because <laughs> Pedram motivated me to do this gong and it's the best container. It's just like what you're describing for condensing and just making it happen no matter what. Right. No, it is. I love that. And I love the gong. I want to do the gong. Can I get down on the gong? Please like, do. Totally. Either of you, you called me. I'm so upset about Yeah. This. Well, okay. you know what happened is we were just doing it. And then all of a sudden, our friends got all like offended. And we're like, hey, how about us? And we're like, oh, sure. So I got Abel James and Allison here at the house right now. They started their gong on the same day as us. So we're all gonging together. And so we have, I think Summer Box starts today. Just jump in, sister. Uh, I'm doing it. I'm yeah, gone yeah, with yeah, you. yeah. And it's all just, it's, it's just about accountability and sensible structure for saying, look, what are my priorities and how come I forgot about them yesterday when yeah. they've always been my priorities and, and how is yeah. it that my attention is so fickle? And that's why I like good quality health information is important, but also digging deep. And that's, I really love like, you and I have great conversations together. Um, we always have, like, we just kind of like sit down and start yapping about stuff because 
there's so few people that are talking about the essence of where, where these bad food decisions come from, why we don't feel good about ourselves, what it is that, like, what's the pain points that are actually driving us to have that type of aberrant behavior, if you will. And I'd mm -hmm. love to just dance around that a little bit because sister takes it deep and, um, you know, you go to places that people need to go because it's never really about the calories of the food or all that. It's about how we feel about ourselves. Right. No, it is. And it's such a, a bigger picture. And before we get on this, can I just talk about like um, really quickly, you guys mentioned, you know, the gong and the accountability and the support. I think it's so critical and doing that one thing, right? Like with the summit, one of the things that I noticed about halfway through are people are like, whoa, great information. I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And I'm like, whoa, don't do all that because you won't do mm. any of it. I know how this works. Like I've seen this movie. I can tell you how it ends. So what we're doing is actually put together just a 10 day challenge, not a hundred days, but a 10 day, um, transformational nutrition challenge it's just accountability with this amazing support group set up and you choose one thing that you're going to do every day that you learn from the summit that you're going to implement into your life every single day for that 10 days and then the cool thing and this ties into what you just asked me about bedroom is um you have to celebrate when you do it that day right because change true permanent change is tied to emotions right so we know that if we have an emotional response to something we're more likely to want to experience it again if it's a good emotional response response, right? So at the end of every day, when you do this thing, whatever that thing is that you've chosen, we call it a transformational action. Whatever your transformational action is, you celebrate, right? You don't celebrate with food or anything like that. You don't say, oh my gosh, I totally stayed on this, this, you know, weight loss plan all day and I'm going to have a donut. Like that's not the idea, right? You celebrate it in other ways, but it's tying back in that emotion to really reinforce that new habit, that new change because your brain lights up, right? You guys know this. And, um, and so that's how we create those permanent changes. And then, so I love that you guys were doing that too. And I'm so in, um, what you were talking about, you know, it's, it's, it's never the food, right? Um, last night I went to this really cool thing, taking more time for myself because of the summit, right? Uh, and it was just a, an evening of quiet conversation and meditation. And it was led by a man named Roy Nelson. You guys know our friend Trisha Nelson, her dear husband. And he spoke and shared his story of addiction and overcoming. And he said, the problem is never the problem. And he's so right. The problem is never the problem. The problem isn't the food. The problem isn't your willpower. There's a, a deeper seated issue that I really geek out on talking about, as you guys know, but I feel like that's really where the conversation needs to go. And that was part of the summit is really starting a bigger conversation around why do we know what to do, but we still don't do it. Like, what is that disconnect? And, and it comes back to lots of things and we could talk about this for hours, but you know, one of the things really is um, understanding who you are and living from that place. And what I mean by that is, you know, we think, I mean, I, I love transformation, but when we think of transformation, I think most of us tend to think about big changes, right? Like shifting everything. I want to transform into this new person, this new body, this new soul. And I don't really look at it that way, um, even though I'm an expert in transformation. Um, Krishnamurti has a great quote, and, and he said, um, when you begin to understand what you are without trying to change it, then what you are undergoes a transformation. Boom. And I, yeah, right? And I was like, whoa, that is so powerful. And so the essence of that essentially, I believe, is to really reconnect with who you are. Because what happens is we have all these expectations placed upon us, right? And I'll use women as an example. Men have this problem too. It's not just women. Same thing happens to men. Um, but for simplicity's sake, like we're born with these perfect little beings, right? I mean, Pedram, you have soul and he's like so perfect. I could just squeeze him so hard. I won't, but I could. <laughs> and so like, if he wants something, he cries and he doesn't think anything is wrong with that. Right? Like he's just being sold. This is just who he is. But as we get older as kids, we hear things like you're being too this, you're being too that, you know, you're being too loud. You're being too crazy. Stop being so wild. Be like little Susie sitting in the corner. See little Susie. Why can't you be more like that? You know, calm, easy. And this only continues. We're expected to be the good girl, you know, help your mom, like have nice manners, all of these things. You go to school, you have to get good grades and get into college and get a great job and meet Mr. Right and have the 2.5 kids and be a rock star in the boardroom and a porn star in the bedroom and look like a Barbie doll while doing it. 
That's the way it is. That's Those are the expectations placed on us. And the problem with all of that, other than the fact that it's completely ridiculous and stupid, is that we get so caught up in trying to become who they say that we should be that we forget who we are. So what I really see is, and I've seen this with thousands of clients over the years, when we can start to reconnect to unearth, to rediscover who we are as a being on this planet and really connect to the things that light us up, you know, that makes life worth living, that makes us happy, we find our value and how we can contribute, then that's a transformation. Because all of those other choices, guys, like the food and, and the sleeping and the meditation, all those things that we know that we need to do, those really start to fall into place when you understand your role and rediscover who you are. Bam. Well, you know what? This is why I love her. Um, guys, I mean, this is, this is a conversation that I think is really missing in the entire healthcare model. It's like, you know, it used to be about mind, body, spirit integration and how, you know, the, the entirety of our being functioned. And then you parse that all out and then you, you know, go talk to your priest or your rabbi about the spirit stuff, go to the shrink for the mind stuff and go to the doctor. Oh, which specialty? One of 1,900 different people are going to give different opinions for the physical stuff. Um, and then none of those parts are, are, are you know, coordinated at all. And, um, t you know, we talked about this a fair amount over the weekend. It's like, you know, consciousness is just out. It's missing from the equation. And everyone's unconscious and asking, hey, what should I do instead of who am I and, and what makes me happy? So I just think that that's such a cool message. And I thank you for holding that down because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people just trying to, like, feed more diet programs to the zombies saying, oh, well, they'll just keep buying it. Right. And that's not really helping people. So, you know, thank yeah. you for helping people. Mm. Well, thanks, Pedram. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I actually, I saw this firsthand after I wrote my diet book. Um, and, you know, not that there are, like, a lot that we don't need to know how to eat, right? Like, we have a lot of friends who write great diet books. I wrote one just for the record. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but like J.J. Virgin, you know, like J.J. talks about uh, food intolerances. We need to know that. We need to know mm -hmm. because otherwise we think we're eating healthy foods. Maybe they're not healthy for us. And so I think that, I don't think there's anything wrong with diets. I mean, I'm interviewed in the media all the time. I'm on TV shows and in magazines all the time. And people always say, like, why don't diets work? I don't know that it's that diets don't work. I oftentimes think that it's that we don't work the diet. You know, I think that there are a lot of great diets out there and diet just meaning like the way you need to eat. And I think everyone has a perfect diet for their body. I don't subscribe to anything dogmatic. I don't, it's not black or white for me. I love to play in the gray. That's my thing. But I think that you need to find the right diet, meaning way of eating that works for you. And I think that there are some great resources, some great books, diet books, if you will, that can help with that. But I just think that there's a bigger missing piece. You know, it's not... For other than the misinformation that we can all agree is not great, the good information, even though we have that, we're still not taking action on it, right? And is that the diet's fault? I don't think so. Mm. Mm, such a good point. Such a good point. I feel like I want to recap some of these truth bombs that you've dropped, Cynthia. <laughs> Are we down with that? I'm down for anything with you two. Oh. <laughs> Hooray. Yes, okay. you did. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> so I want to start off. I just love what Pedram said about you, which is so true. Sister takes it deep. I just, I really love how you take this idea of transformation and you give us the nuggets, you give us the steps, you are laying down the breadcrumbs that really allow us to create the transformation out of those small incremental steps. So I really appreciate that about you. You started off with a great comment from your last summit about Kevin Gianni and how he did this one thing. He started having a green smoothie for breakfast and he lost 30 pounds. He became the lovely person that he is. And I, I just love that idea that instead of getting overwhelmed with all the things that we could be doing, just do the one thing. Number two, you talked about condensing, which I think is so important. It's a great action step for people who have busy lives. And frankly, I think I know two people who don't have busy lives. This is such a common issue. And you talked about like throwing the curcumin into your smoothie and getting the maca in there, like, you know, trying to do these things so that you have the one action, make a smoothie, and you're condensing these health transformations, which I, I think is so cool. Number three, 
I really like this 10 day challenge. And as soon as I go through recapping, I hope you'll tell us how people can do this 10 day challenge and how you choose that one thing, the transformational action, and then celebrate it. I love that idea. So totally cool. Number four, beautiful moment talking about Roy Nelson last night. Problem. I feel like you really articulated this in a powerful way. You had the Krishnamurti uh, quote and this idea that, as Pedram said, it's not so much asking, what should I do, like being a zombie about it, but instead yeah. connecting to, who am I? Yeah. What lights me up? How do I unearth that on a daily basis? It's not like, you know, you do it and you're done. It's, it's really an ongoing practice. And then number five, I love this idea of diets. And it's not that diets fail, it's that we don't work the diet. We fail in the way that we work it and kind of taking those those steps, those transformational steps. So I hope I articulated some of these messages that you have had with us today. So tell us about how people can connect maybe with your 10-day challenge and some of the other amazing work you do. Sure. So the 10-day challenge, um, you can see if you just go to transformationalnutritionsummit.com. So transformational nutrition summit, very long URL.com, but worth it. Uh, you could check out the videos. You can see the interviews that we did with you guys, which is amazing. And then once you pick up the full access pass, because you have to know what's in the summit before you can do the challenge, then you get access to this private group. Um, we have hundreds of people in there that are coming together to just support each other. And it's only for 10 days. Like you can do anything for 10 days. It's like, uh, again, this, this is so fresh on my mind last night when we were hanging out with Roy and Tricia, and he said, you know, I went to a psychiatrist. Um, like 30 years ago and he told me it was going to take a year and a half to get better and I left and didn't go back because I didn't have that kind of time you know and 40 mm. years later here we still are so I thought that was really interesting but 10 days is about all that busy people like you and I can get our head around you know even like the 21 day challenge or whatever sometimes I'm like I cannot do I don't have three weeks you know 10 days I can do so so, and, and you can repeat the challenge over and over, and we will. We have this amazing support group, but you can find out all about that at transformationalnutritionsummit.com. Um, you can get access and see the videos there. It's amazing. I invite you to, to join us. Yeah, that sounds fun. You know what we'll do, too, is people who, like, are not ready to start a proper 100-day challenge, we'll have them do a 10-day challenge, take a couple baby steps, there get some go. good habits, get a feather in their cap, um, yeah. and then when they're ready to you know do some heavier lifting, uh, they could jump in. But you know that's that's all the heavy lifting you need to do is today, and then tomorrow you just need to rinse and repeat. And that's what people aren't used to, right? <laughs> it's not yeah, that hard. Totally. Just I'll have a green smoothie tomorrow again, right? And totally. so yeah, you know, uh, thank you again. Thank you for doing what you do. It's awesome. And I just you know I can't wait till we could all hang out again at some point. Um, you know, in 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 th three dimensions. So we could all hang out in the sun and enjoy the lifestyles that um, we have. I mean, we're all California people, uh, so let's go get some sun together. I'm down. Like I said, anything with you two, I'm there. Just call me. <laughs> slumber party. Oh, I know. We totally have to have a slumber party. We've been talking about this for years now. It's got to go down. I'm bringing my <sighs> teddy bear. Happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No comment. So yeah. everybody, thank you for joining the Health Bridge today. If you want to learn more about the gong, which you can join at any time, you can go to healthbridgeshow.com forward slash gong. Pedram, thank you so much for being an awesome work husband. Cynthia Pasquella, love you, sister. Sister runs deep. <laughs> That's my new tagline. You guys know that, right? That's one of my website. Like, I just to see out. it on your website. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you guys, too, for all the work and all the good that you piled out into the world. You know that I'm big fans of both of you. You're my friends. I love you deeply. But I just I have so much respect for the work that you do. So thank you to, to both of you in such a huge way. Word. <laughs> Mwah. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. This has been the Health Bridge. And um, what's our uh, healthbridgeshow.com? There it is. <laughs> I always look to Sarah for like the, you know, the, the official stuff. I just hang around. All right. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.